Good evening, everyone. Welcome to this lovely second live stream. I'm, I'm once again joined by Mots2. Say hello. Hello, it's great to see you all. There we go. Sort of. Hold on, yes, well, well I mean, I can't literally see anybody, but, you know, it's, it's, it's great to be doing another one of these. Okay, so it's like, how there's some, some French supporters and players here, but I'm glad there are. Um, thank you for joining. Just a uh, quick heads up again. Uh, Twitch Prime, still there. 14 days old. So just to summarize the disclaimers, similar to last time, uh, this is going to be a de developer discussion of a very niche topic of tutorials. Uh, I tend to get very absurdly focused on very trivial details, that's just how I roll. Um, that's not going to be to everyone's taste, so if, if you um, enjoyed the previous one, it's going to be more of the same. If you're coming here looking for exciting reveals of future content, um, this isn't the place for it, I'm afraid. Uh, but if you just hear a few Lootscape, that, that's great, feel free to join us. Um, so I'm just going to go through the, the slides and chat over certain things in them and then endeavor to actually take a breath every um, few slides or so. Um, Luke is checking the chat. Uh, I can't see the chat. Um, and hopefully you guys might have some questions along the way for us. We'll have, also have a bit of a stew and a at the end with any time that's left over within the hour for any further questions you might have. So please put your questions in the chat as well if they come up. Great. Um, so first of all, we, we have um, character creation. So um, in the original old school, um, we had the character creation taking place in world rather than being uh, something that happened before you enter Tutorial Island. Um, the uh, old school form also presents all of the customization options to you all on one screen all at once. This has the advantage that you're not um, switching between different tabs and you can holistically see all the changes on your character all at once. The drawback from a cognitive load standpoint, and that's a uh, term I'm going to be using a, a lot, you might get tired of me saying it, um, basically cognitive load is when there's a lot of stuff going on on screen all at once, and it can feel a bit overwhelming, you're not really sure where your eye should be drawn to. Um, so the old school version gives you um, a lot of convenience, but um, it can also be a lot to take in all at once. So the, the newer form takes a more of a stage process, where you um, we start with uh, broader features like your gender, and then we go down through several tabs to more specific features. That's about it for that one. And then we get into when you actually arrive in Tutorial Island itself. Um, now in the old school one, I've got a question for you. Uh, which character do you think you're, you're playing in that <laughs> screenshot? Uh, the Ooh. answer is, you're, you're actually the guy in the orange shirt uh, behind the guy who's in the foreground. And that's kind of the drawback <laughs> of having multiple players all in, in the same starting area. Even as you start out, you're not even sure, well, who even am I on this screen? It's an, another aspect of cognitive load of trying to just discern uh, the relation between this character you just created and, and who you're playing. Uh, so for the newer one, we opted to um, go for an instance environment, so there isn't as much going on. It's a little bit more of a controlled environment. We know what entities are around that you might interact with. Uh, the old school one also um, it basically had two mediums of communication, uh, either uh, talking. Uh oh, we've lost them. What's too briefly? 
Oh boy. <laughs> All right. Give it a second. Two. I imagine Mots yeah. Two will pop in. Are you back, Mots Two? Uh, yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, there we go. Yeah. I, I hear that uh, my provider is a bit un unreliable. I think I use the same one as Mod Freezy, so um, we were lucky last time. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll continue to be lucky this time around. Uh, what's that? Okay, so I'm going to repeat what I said, and hopefully I'm not repeating myself too much. Um, so old school's um, tutorial mechanisms were that they can either uh, convey information through um, conversation, through talking to an NPC, or through this message box at the bottom of the screen. Um, consequently, that message box tended to get quite verbose. As you can see, it's um, got quite a few sentences there trying, trying to portray to you all the different things you're doing. Uh, the newer form, we use um, more con contextual uh, pop-ups, just conveying certain things and trying to include a, a bit of iconography in there as well. Um, something that can be a bit of a struggle to people coming into RuneScape is that it has a quite um, unconventional control scheme. In, in principle, it's nice and simple, everything you just point and click, but you also got to deal with um, manual rotation of your camera, zooming that camera, um, and you, uh, the keyboard control uh, for that is to use your WASD keys or the arrow keys, and often people come in expecting to be able to move with those keys. So first thing up, we um, try to make you aware of what those, those keys do in, in this context. Uh, also, the newer one, I took a trick from Ashdale here, where um, it starts in closely zoomed in on your character, and the thing that you're supposed to interact with is currently outside of your field of view. That way, it encourages you to learn by doing, um, in order to, because you effectively have to rotate the camera in order to see, as you can see in the um, little pop-up window down there, uh, the thing you need to enter, interact with. So that way, they can hopefully. Well, either they either they figure out how to rotate their camera or they can't progress. Um, fortunately, in, in terms of the days that we, we get through, the, there is very little drop drop off here, so it, it seems to be quite successful. Um, is there any questions from the chat so far, Luke? Uh, I've got I've got two of them. Uh, are you able to explain a little bit about what cognitive load is first and why it's bad to have too much cognitive load? Uh, yeah, um, I did mention that earlier, so it, it might have come through just before that, that stage. But um, yeah, basically, uh, if there's a lot of uh, information on the screen all at one time, um, you don't know uh, where to focus your, your attention, and it, it can uh, feel quite overwhelming. Um, an example is that there's this, um, there's this card reader at, at a, a card park near here, which is just a, it's a sea of uh, flashing lights and um, all these sorts of things on that, that um, machine that's drawing my attention and I don't really know what I'm supposed to be focusing on right now in order to go through the process of putting my ticket in there and, and paying for it. Um, so trying to minimize the, the amount of stuff on, on the screen to things that you need to deal with at the moment and then um, providing it at, at a stage in, in that flow when it becomes more relevant to you. So, so is it too much cognitive load also creates too friction, right? Kind of often, or confusion which in turn creates friction and in turn creates frustration and then you might stop playing as well right yeah exactly you, you want to yeah. try and make um, the user experience as smooth as possible if there's um, mm -hmm. as say friction if there's things there where the player doesn't know what what to do they're less inclined to continue playing um, you know when when RuneScape was created um, there weren't as many games on the market people were generally more resilient you might you know buy one game and um, uh, you might just play that, that one, one game exhaustively to com completion because you don't really have any, anything else. Um, but now that it's such a saturated market that um, we have to be a lot more um, mindful of, of tolerance. Um, particularly, we've also found p uh, mobile users tend to be um, a lot less resilient. So like our, um, our retention drop-off is slightly lower on mobile going through Tutorial Island specifically than desktop where people are a lot more resilient. That's actually really interesting. I did not know that. But I, 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 I can't imagine it being the case because there are just so many mobile games out there and they they've tend to have very smooth processes as well. Um, the second question I had for you, and that was about uh, the slight, about the character creation. Mm -hmm. um, what are your thoughts on, for example, adding like a, a look randomizer because currently it doesn't exist? A, a look randomizer? In the sense of yeah. having like a randomized button and it's... Uh, it, 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 yeah. It, Experiences. It's um, it switches up your head and, and the colors and all those things. Okay, well, I mean, the, the new one on the right does have a randomized button down the bottom, which which literally does just um, pick randomly from the, the, the different sets that are available. Okay. Um, 
yeah, in, in the old school form, yeah, um, it defaults to your um, uh, familiar chap with the, the goatee and the bald head. Um, and then for okay. expedience sake, some people I might just do that by default, which is why well, there tends to be a leaning towards one particular appearance. But uh, yeah, that feature's there. Cool. Uh, yeah, I'm going into a bit more detail then about these pop-ups. Now, um, like I said, I can be a bit critical of my own work here, and this was one that I kind of uh, put together quite quickly, because in fact, uh, implementing Tutorial Island was something that was basically done within the scope of an A-B test when I was on the Ninja team. Um, so it was something I had to do in a very, and my, myself and um, a mod doctor uh, had to turn around in a very rapid period of time, so um, did the best I could with the time I had. But this is something I would like to finesse in the future. The trouble is that the player is putting, is actually, there is an issue of cognitive load here. Um, we're covering rotating your camera and zooming your camera all at once. Um, that is quite a lot to take in at one time. So uh, what I've done, um, if the player skips Tutorial Island, um, the, we have a different onboarding process when you arrive in Berthorpe. Uh, which is a bit more streamlined, so it goes through and handles uh, rotation as, as one action, zoom as another action, and then interacting with something in the world as, a, as another one, so it's a bit more of a steady uh, process. Um, if I was to go back to it up to tutorial art, and I'd be inclined to do the same sort of thing here, and consequently also um, dynamically switch between the objective on that activity tracker too, so you're not reading as much text all at once. Uh, this is also a quite nice feature that um, the, uh, the old school team um, did for, for their one, which I'd be quite inclined to steal. So they have a dedicated space on their interface uh, where they cycle through the, um, those basic um, control um, features. Uh, but I think it ends around about the time that you leave, leave the guide's house. It, it does fade away after a while. But that's another way that you can hand, handle that, break it down to small sections. If the player has essentially forgotten, then there's an, another persistent way of displaying that. Um, so that they, they have a something to fall, fall back on if, if they do if they find they're struggling with the controls, because it can be a tricky one. Uh, then we get on to your first conversation. Um, there's a little thing on the new one to indicate what button you need to push to progress. Uh, I recently made that so that that's um, a context sensitive feature so uh, if you were to skip tutorial art and the very first npc that you speak to will have have that that way um, it, it is onboarded regardless of, of what your first conversation might be uh, and then just to compare the two um, it winds up being quite wordy the, the older version um, it tries to pack a lot of information into that initial conversation i tried to boil it down to something uh, more more simple um, e even going into things like the knowledge base, uh, which um, this was an old video that I re referred to, by the way, so some of the, that stuff will be redundant information. Um, first, personally, I'm, I'd be very keen to try and emphasize uh, the wiki a lot more, do more um, wiki integration features, because the way I see it, that's a key part of the player's user flow anyway. Um, there's so much of the, of the game just, just isn't available in-game. People very, get accustomed to that, so you might as well teach that user flow. The tricky part, of course, is there with um, mobile coming out of um, your, your clients going into a browser page and coming back can be quite um, a uh, tricky flow um, so ideally that would be through some kind of embedded um, browser that's displayed that wiki so that would be a feature that would be a long time coming but we'd certainly like to move more in that direction uh, any questions luke um not really from chat um, there are a lot of questions about other things that are not tutorial related. That's okay. not something we will be going into to detail about today. Um, that is probably best safe for a stream on Tuesday, so I would suggest you ask those questions then. Uh, aside from that, I just full heartedly agree on the, the Vicky stuff. I feel like it 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 is a an official part of playing RuneScape almost. Like, if you're not using the wiki, it's just 10 times harder. So. Yeah, so consequently, I think it's a, a, a skill that I think we fundamentally need to teach. It's just a, a critical part, part, part of, of your gameplay. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we're gonna look, I'd like to look into that in the future. Um, so, you might have recalled from the classic tutorial island that there was a controls guide. So, um, the, the older form um, uh, emphasizes your options menu and uh, the controls that are available to you. Um, I opted to not include that in the newer one just to uh, focus on your uh, world interactions and because uh, frankly our options menu is just so terribly complicated if I started explaining it we would be here all day. Um, so it's something to, to defer until later. Uh, just focusing in on a few parts of the user interface at this stage. So um, 
old school um, tutorial uses uh, just, just um, two dedicated uh, parts of your, your interface. Um, your minimap is always present, and there's um, these stone buttons that get it added, added to your interface gradually over the, um, the course of the tutorial as those features get introduced. So we, we just cover the options menu, so that one appears down there. Um, the newer one, in a similar sort of fashion, uh, as I mentioned last time, it requires some pretty nasty hacks in order to achieve it, but we have a duplicated version of our ribbon um, that gradually adds those um, components to, to it as you progress through the tutorial in a similar sort of way. Uh, we do unfortunately also have the action bar, because that turned out to be a very difficult thing to get rid of, but I've at least minimized that to try and reduce some of the cognitive load. I also opted to not include the minimap at this stage um, because the player is in a confined room at, at, at this point um, and they wouldn't really need to see, see that context until that they leave that room so it's just one way, um, there's one less distraction on screen to deal with and they can focus on what's in the world. Uh, then another thing, the progress bar that Tutorial Island has. Um, this is something that I'm, I was quite fond of. Uh, that Unfortunately, it's, it's quite a, a long experience. It takes about 20 minutes to play through Tutorial Island. So having something on your screen that lets you know when this will finally be over is, I think, helpful. Um, so uh, when I uh, recreated Tutorial Island, I did the, the version that's in the middle there. Um, op also an opportunity to put a objective um, front and center nicely succinct uh, into that, that as, as well. Um, basically the equivalent of that message box that's on, on, on the, the, the old version. Um, but trying to keep, keep it short and sweet, use highlighting. Um, just, just to make it very clear, here's what you need to do, and um, use pop-ups for the um, additional information if that is required. Uh, I looks like I timed it slightly wrong when I had saved it, but also it um, shows that the uh, which of your button is being clicked by this little um, gold highlight, um, and that, that there's animation there as well to just to try help indicate the interaction you need to do. And uh, then when we moved over to um, the new path system, I um, needed to. Uh, convert this, this uh, tutorial to use um, that as this path so it has the activity tracker in there as a way of portraying that information so that all becomes embedded in uh, that one system uh, which unfortunately means we lost that progress bar I'm hoping to try to bring that back someday I think that is a lot more visual uh, yes what was I talking about here uh, any questions uh, I've got I've written down three of them uh, cool. A lot of people are asking my name as well. I'm Mott Purki. I've been community manager for about two years, so I'm glad you still don't recall my name. Uh, it's great. <laughs> um, a lot of people are very happy with what you're talking about. Uh, and someone okay. was actually, uh, Tommy Zimmer was actually curious uh, if there is a reason uh, why dungeoneering and crafting are not part of Tutorial Island. Do you, do you, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, so that that's an interesting issue. Basically, um, a tutorial gets implemented at a certain time, like I believe Tutorial Island was 2004, and um, so at the time it covered whatever was uh, part of the game at the time, and then this is a game that gets added to on a very regular basis. Uh, so um, as new features get added in, you have to ask the question of, well, do we put this stuff into the tutorial, um, or do we leave it as something for the player to be taught later on? Um, later tutorials tended to lean towards being more comprehensive, so like the Learning the Ropes tutorial that came after this one uh, was updated to include a lot of the new features that have been brought out since, um, but then they're just meant for an even longer tutorial and uh, a long period of time before the player actually gets into the game and starts um, getting to engage with the wider world. So um, you've got to try and find that balance between um, teaching the stuff the player really needs to know right now, and I'd argue that the current tutorial Arden does teach several things that aren't really crucial for core gameplay like um, the prayer skill. Um, you can teach those, those sorts of things when you actually arrive at, at that place. Um, in the example of Dungeoneering, rather than trying to artificially create a, some kind of simulacrum of Dungeoneering within this uh, tutorial island environment, um, it would be better to help give the player some means of being aware that Dungeoneering exists, like through some kind of a path that they can opt into, the guides in there, and then tutorialize the flow of well, how you get into Dungeoneering and um, how you, you make a group and, and uh, then Dungeoneering itself has embedded tutorials um, as you step through it. It's a, a rigged version of, of, of that uh, first um, map that's uh, simplified to try and teach you the core mechanics. Uh, so it's only at this I, I, it's generally preferred to do as more of a kind of a staged process than too much of an upfront process because the player may know, not have any interest in crafting or Dungeoneering. Yeah. 
No, fully understandable. I, I kind of imagine it's the same with archaeology, right? And and that skill has a tutorial when you reach that zone as well. Yeah. Um, so that's quite nice. Um, currently, this is his Mumphy who says uh, the wiki command, so explanation mark wiki in chat. So if you don't know yeah. that, make sure you do that as well. Or is it slash? It's actually slash, my fault, yeah, slash wiki. Yeah. Um, it's currently kind of like an Easter egg in game. There's mm. not a lot of bits uh, that point towards it. Um, could we potentially showcase that in a menu then? Would that be a good Yeah, I, I, um, personally, I'd, I'd be keen on that. Um, yeah, I think that's something that, that old, old school um, it, it improves uh, for us for that they have a dedicated button for, for it. Um, uh, we've talked before about um, essentially having a wiki spell that you, you can uh, use to, to target entities and that would, would uh, trigger um, that, that, that link, uh, different ways that we could do it. Uh, yeah, certainly I would like us to do more of that sort of thing. That that is more within the space of um, the user interface overall and, and that, uh, that top level experience rather than specifically tutorialization. So it's not something that I would specifically do. It's not really my area of expertise. But uh, yeah, it's certainly we certainly want to br uh, bring uh, wiki front and center we just have to uh, bear in mind what's the best approach to take for all of our platforms and that you know also isn't going to contribute even further to cognitive load i actually quite like that it would be pretty cool to have like a spell wisdom or something and then you use it and you get brought to the wiki because you learn more about it or something but that's just yeah like I, was, I was thinking like an identifier or research cool. spell yeah. yeah 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 that's quite nice um the last question so currently we've got the path system in runescape um, what are plans to add uh, more final gore orientated paths? Is that something we'd ever want to, to do? So for example, unlock Prif or get a Sunspear? Unlock Convention? Uh, yeah. Um, so some of those already exist. There is a, a, a path to Prifthinus and a few other key features like um, uh, unlocking uh, Ancient Curses, getting you to God Wars Dungeon, and a few things like that. Um, that's definitely uh, the area I would like to focus on next. So as I mentioned last time, my current priority is helping out with um, a, a pr improvements to the, the backend data structure for our achievement system. Um, that, that is facilitating us being able to do more with um, paths in the future. So uh, yes, that, that's definitely something I'm, I'm planning to, to, to work on long term. As I say, I've got to build the toolbox to get us there first because our current um, path system um, has quite a lot, a lot of limitations. Um, some, some of those are because we opted to emphasize the activity tracker as a way to um, give guidance to the player um, to, to make the, 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 uh, the mobile experience much more streamlined. The drawback to that is that um, in terms of actually uh, accessing uh, more complex um, paths or giving the player more options that that's that whole um, uh, interface interaction needs refinement um, currently we, we don't tutorialize that it's very hidden away on, on a secondary interface um, that interface isn't really fit for purpose so we're wanting to, to, to put, do some more investment there um, but that's going to be the next stage after that is, is looking in, into laying that framework cool all right that, that's it for me again for this bit so feel free to continue okay uh, so, yes, so the, um, um, I don't remember what I was talking about on the previous slide. Oh, the previous slide was basically <laughs> just, just today saying that um, I'd, I'd, we had split the, the goal of um, opening the, the door and going to the Swile Expert into just uh, distinct objectives, while the older version gave you that information, um, both of those objectives at, at once. So just to, uh, so, you, so you, it's a, you have a clear understanding of what's the next thing you need to do rather than have, having too much information. Uh, and then. Um, moving on again, it winds up being quite wordy here in, in, in the older version. Um, in the newer one, we tried to make, keep it much more streamlined, just um, have the, the visual uh, guidance to where you need to go, very clear objective of this is who you need to speak to. Um, and we've covered the um, camera control earlier on, so we don't need to include it here. Uh, so one th one way that we differed is that I emphasized the skills panel um, earlier on. Um, the, the older version is actually out of order here. It, it's um, it, normally in the older tutorial, uh, we start teaching um, chopping down trees and so forth um, and gaining a level before we then see, see the skills menu. I want to try and emphasize the skills um, earlier on because um, skilling is such a, a crucial part of, of RuneScape understanding that you have these, these numbers that go up and then we can uh, cover the um, 
once, once you know the initial state, then we can see the difference is, is made late, later when you've um, gained those levels and you've seen that, that feedback and giving you an idea of the um, wealth of um, different options available to you here. <laughs> no problem. Um, yeah, so this one's uh, fairly similar. We don't have to worry about um, the uh, be, be giving you certain tools uh, because it's all automatically on the tool belt. So that, that simplifies this, this this flow. You just have to do the thing. Um, but you have a, a, um, less going on around you. So you, and also you will you also have to um, make your own fire because you may not necessarily have be able to use somebody else's. So it just helps to con control what you're learning. This is pretty similar, um, and I think something that's important to emphasize in RuneScape is that um, it's quite a, a sit back and wait sort of game. You do an interaction, your character does the work for you. Um, so I feel that's an important thing to put across. We, um, we've had issues where um, new people come in, come in they, they keep trying to click the tree to, to, to chop faster and things like that. And you might have seen that message of you can only click once on fishing spots and things. That was due to that to try to um, give, give that feedback that no, unfortunately, it's not going to go any faster than this. You're just going to have to. Let it flow. Any questions from the chat, Luke? Um, no questions from the there chat for you specifically, but I want to address two things quickly. Um, Dudu Shuk uh, asked or mentioned that there are some performance issues if you enter certain cities and, and those kinds of things. It's something we're aware of. We've actually found a problem already. It was introduced since yesterday, um, and we are currently working on a fix for those. Uh, so hopefully that will get resolved very soon. It is related with our engine, so it requires an engine update. So it will take a little bit of time, but it should hopefully be resolved soon. Um, and then secondly, uh, Scow Scrimsy uh, was commenting on the fact that I was bouncing, and that might be because I have a little bit of music in the background, uh, but I'll try and sit still. <laughs> I'll try to speak to the beat and um, get a bit of a rhythm yes, going. Yes, I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, so um, next up we, we see something else that we do in the more modern tutorial is um, highlighting things in your interface um, rather than using text to try and um, make you aware of them. So do a bit more visual learning. Um, mean, means less text on, on the screen, more, okay, I just need, need to interact with that, that thing that this highlighted and has a bit of glow on it to, to draw your eye, that sort of thing. I think I was basically just comparing the two. I don't think there's much that differs. Oh, other than the survival expert happens to mention uh, why um, eating food is, at, why you're even doing this. What, what's the, the purpose of having food? Don't have to worry about uh, being given a net. We can just go straight ahead and do the interaction. And good old burning the shrimp happens in both cases. Although I think that um, old school has uh, recently skipped over this, this section because. Um, uh, like ourselves, we found that there is a, sl a slight drop in engagement around th this point. People can get a bit frustrated at this stage. So I'm hoping we can do the same ourselves soon. Um, as I mentioned last time, if we make any changes, we do them in A-B tests so that we can compare um, if there is it is actually making an improvement or not. Even if it's something that, in this case, it was proven in old school, we still want to do the A-B test just to verify that we're not, um, due to some uh, particular quirk, making things worse by making a change in the tutorial. Yes, but we at least um, reinforced on the newer version uh, that um, even though you burnt the thing, it's not your fault. This always happens to everyone the first time, um, just to try to uh, alleviate that, that feeling of um, you, you failed. I mean, at least letting you know that it was rigged that way, just to try and soften the, bl the blow a little bit. Uh, yeah, emphasizing the food, going on to the next section and splitting that up into um, two pages so there's not a um, not telling about the, those two things uh, simultaneously. Uh, I'm going to ask you, Stu, what's your yeah. thoughts on the burning shrimp in general? Because I feel like it is a, it's it's all, all not a contentious topic, but there's always a lot of different opinions around the burning shrimp, whether we should burn the first shrimp or not in the first place. Yeah, exactly. It's it's um it is iconic. It's um it's part of your childhood memories of, of, of RuneScape, you know, that that's of going through all, all that, that efforts to do, do this thing and, and then immediately failing. And I think for a lot of people feeling that they personally failed, that, that they um, 
they got a, got a, a bad role or, or, or just the, the RNG has started off sucking. It's going to stay that, that way henceforth. Um, so yeah, that, that is a, a tricky one trying to reconcile um, when it, it creates kind of that, that shared collective experience of what RuneScape is versus um, it being an obstacle to new players coming in and how, how we, we reconcile that those two conflicts of the, the engaged user and the new user. Um, so from a user experience standpoint, uh, I'd prefer it if we removed it, but my player side also acknowledges um, the value of being in that shared experience. So yeah, I guess I'm conflicted. Um, so that, this is a case where we let the data um, to, to tell it.